Hi, this is Brad Smith from Beersmith.com, and today I'm going to talk about how to use the Yeast Starter Tool uh, on the Recipe tab in Beersmith Web. Uh, these same rules apply to the Beersmith Desktop program as well. So I'm going to start at BeersmithRecipes.com, where I'm logged in my account, and I've got the trial active. I'm going to click on the Recipe Editor button. I'm going to bring up the recipe that I'm working with, which is the Great Lakes Porter here. Um, I've got separate videos on the other tabs here, like the design tab where it shows all the ingredients and so on. But we're going to go to the starter tab where we're going to talk about how to create a yeast starter. Um, first, most important things to do are make sure you've got the recipe brew date correct, uh, which you can set from the design tab right here. There's the recipe brew date. Uh, it's displayed on here though, so you can make sure it's right. And also the package date on your particular uh, set of yeast. So, for example, here I'm using two packages of English ale yeast from White Labs. It's the WLP002. And I've got a fairly recent date. It was January of this year. Um, so if I do both of those things and I have the recipe built, obviously with all the ingredients and so on, um, I can go to the starter tab and it'll show me the recommended number of yeast cells that I need in order to achieve this particular recipe. So I'm using two packages of yeast. It's a 10 plus gallon recipe, 10 or 11 gallon recipe, which is about 40 liters. Um, so up here's the yeast cells that are needed, recommended for this. Um, there's the yeast cells. If I don't use a starter, obviously you can see there's a big difference there. And the number of packages I would need if I don't use a starter. Um, with liquid yeast, quite often you do need a starter. Um, so I'm going to pick, in my, pick my starter size and I can enter the number here. I'm going to put in 3 liters to start with. And generally 1036 is a good number to use for your starter gravity. It'll show me the dry malt needed, so that's how much dry malt I need for my 3 liter starter to build that. Um, I can play with other options here like using a stir plate, which helps a lot. Obviously if I use a stir plate I can get away with a single stage starter. Um, and down here's an option to add the starter volume to the final volume. So if I want to, if I'm concerned about the the final volume of the beer uh, versus the you know volume into the boiler, or whatever, I have that option as well. Um, so for a single stage starter with three liters, uh, I'm going to end up with um, this is the recommended size. They're recommending five liters. I only put in three liters. Uh, so with three liters, I'm only going to end up with 355 billion uh, starter yeast cells in the stage. So that's for stage one. Uh, obviously, I need 464. 357 isn't quite enough. So I could go to a second stage starter. And if I do that, I've got the, uh, these are the recommended sizes. So if I was going to go with just a single stage starter, it recommends I use 5.2 liters roughly. If I want to have a two-stage starter, I can split it into two and a, a two-liter two, two starter roughly and a three-liter starter roughly, and I can enable that just by clicking here, and I can enter the second starter stage. So, for example, if I went with, uh, let's say, three liters and two liters, you can see that I'm getting up to where I want to be. Um, if I went with, however, uh, two point uh, two point two, the recommended values here, two point two, and three liters here, uh, I missed that three liters here. And I can play with these sizes to get whatever I want. Um, you can see now I'm up to the recommended starter size. So I'll probably just go with that. I'll do a, a two liter starter to start with. And then I'll create a second stage starter by adding another three liters of work. And that'll get me up to the, uh, the total that I want to achieve. So, um, so this is basically how the starter to tool works. Obviously I can add more yeast here if I want. I can play with the number of, of yeast packages I want here. Um, and I can, I can look at, you know, how many cells I'm getting out of the first stage, how many cells I'm getting out of the second stage, uh, and adjust these numbers up and down to get the starter size that I'm, I'm comfortable with uh, for the particular recipe that I'm building. And these are all tied, of course, to the, to the yeast type that I'm working with, as well as the actual recipe that I have here. Uh, it, it calculates all those and, and factors that into these calculations. Um, so that's a quick overview on how to use the yeast starter tool. I will mention there are also uh, some tools here to help you with dry yeast and dry yeast hydration. When you're working with dry yeast, generally you're not worried quite so much about the um, uh, starter size, uh, but you are worried about uh, how many packets you're using and also proper yeast hydration. And so uh, this same page can help you with some of those features. Um, so again, if you want to try the Beersmith Web uh, uh, features, you can go to Beersmith Web. You can download, uh, well, actually, you don't even have to download. You can get a free trial uh, just by going to uh, beersmithrecipes.com. 
and starting on the home page and clicking on the free trial or create a create a uh, um, create an account right there and get started today and you get a 30-day trial so that's a quick overview of this of the yeast starter tool uh, in beersmithrecipes.com uh, the new web version if you want to learn more you can go to beersmith.com or beersmithrecipes.com thank you for listening